Yeah, so we came, me and my husband came here in 2008, actually on a holiday. Mary and I, we, we'd retired and we lived in Spain, Gran Canaria. We stayed there for a year, but we got bored. The plan was we would tour Europe, but we went back to England in March and it was very, very cold. So one of Mary's friends suggested we come to visit Kerala. We'd spent two or three Christmases in Goa, which we loved, but they said try the Kerala experience. So we booked a two week holiday in March 2008. And basically we found two little puppies and we've stayed ever since. We had a six month, we had a six month visa. So we decided not to fly back with Thompson's and then we, basically we found a house that we could rent for six months. We had a word with a lady who owned the house who said, yes, you can keep two puppies. And that is why we stayed. And we saw a couple of puppies which were um, in bad condition. So we rescued them. And actually um, the first ever dog that we rescued actually passed away last week. So she was 14 years old. After six months, we started doing some volunteering at an animal sanctuary that unfortunately closed a few years later. In the meantime, after six months, we'd actually adopted six dogs in total. So one a month basically that we brought back. Unfortunately now we've only got three of them have survived, but Chitty, the, the one who started it all, she died last week unfortunately. She was 14 years and four months. And we've been here ever since basically trying to look after the dogs as you've seen the clinic at my house i have roughly 75 dogs that we rescue a lot of them are injured dogs a lot of lady dogs a lot of them came as puppies and basically it's just taken over our lives so and my husband uh, you know he can't bear to see dogs starving just because people can't be bothered to give them a little bit of this a little bit of that he hates to see people mistreating dogs in the street. There's no reason for it. Um, and basically I do this, I spend two hours a day, every day, dog feeding. I do two areas. I do the car park and what I call the Leela run. And then I do the Samudra run. Down here, there's probably 20 to 30 that I feed, including the junction at Covalham. And then down at the Samudra, once again, 20 or 30. Sometimes there may only be eight or nine. Other times they can be as many as 35. The dogs know I'm coming, they know the engine noise, and they come from, if they hear the bike, they're straight at me. And, and, and that's, that's it really, it's taken over our lives. But I'm 63, my wife's 53, what else would we be doing? And these dogs will stay here till, till they die. They, they're, they've got a home for life here. So, yeah, thank you. This is Lindy, <laughs> say hi Lindy. <laughs> Yeah, when we, when we rescue them, we just, we just name them. We're kind of running out of names, to be honest. But um, yeah, this is Boomer. We called her Boomer because uh, she's like a boomerang. We tried to put her back in the street, but she came back to our gate. This is Lindy, this is Rita, this is Nelson, Whoa. that's Andy. We decided we had to do something about the birth rate of the dogs. Um, so I founded uh, this Street Dog Watch Association in 2013. We set up a committee and the committee, um, you know, does all the organising and, uh, and stuff like that. We, we're very fortunate now because we've been looking after animals so long and Street Dog Watch now is firmly established with whatever organisations it needs to be. We have a, a committee with, I would class as professional people. When we started, and this is no dis disrespect to any of the people who helped to start it, there were poor people that really just wanted to mix with English people. They helped. We've had nothing but help since we came from the public. It's the authorities at times that have not helped like they could. But that's a battle that, we, that we're fighting all the time. But now our committee, I think you've met one of them today, they're avid dog lovers and hopefully our plan is we'll guide it where we need to do but these people, including the manager, Vigin, at the clinic, they're understanding more and more now and learning our ways. I'm not saying our ways are 100% correct, but as each year goes by, we're learning and learning and learning. It's the only way we can do it. Some people um, don't like sterilisation because they think it's not natural, but nothing in this world is natural anymore. And there is no alternative. The alternatives are let them just breed as they wish 
and then people will start getting problems on the roads, the food, uh, the dog bites, everything else. So it is the most humane solution. And dogs, you know, they get sterilized, they live for a lot of years, they're quite happy. They don't care if they don't have babies. <laughs> they, they don't think like humans. They don't think, oh, I wish I'd had a baby. They really don't. <laughs> they don't care. All my dogs at my house are sterilized. All the dogs here, there's 50 dogs here, they're all sterilized. The, the staff here, uh, we have a manager and an assistant manager and uh, two guys who are the kennel hands. Um, uh, two of them, have, uh, the manager and the assistant manager, have um, the paravet certificate, so they're able to be vets assistants. And the other two guys actually going on the course next week, so they can also um, be vets assistants. And uh, they also dog catch, they do handle the dogs, make sure they're healthy and everything. And they do first aid, you know, for wounds and things. Um, and if it's anything serious, we call the doctor to come. Well, it happens all the time. People call me all the time and say they've got a dog, they're moving house, for example. So they need somebody to take the dog. And they often say to me, uh, if you don't take it, I'm throwing it in the street. It's like it's a normal thing here to throw your dog out in the street. The problem with that is if you have a domesticated dog, which is used to living in a house and being fed every day, it doesn't know how to survive outside. It doesn't know where to get food. Plus it will fight with the stray dogs because the stray dogs don't know what this dog is doing here. Uh, so you're, you're not doing it a favor by letting it out into the street. You're, you're practically killing it. You may as well just kill it, really. It is, dis it is difficult. We're lucky here because we're right near a waste dump and uh, it's an industrial place. There's no uh, real immediate neighbors. So it's not been a problem here. Um, our house, um, our neighbors all know us. We keep the dogs quiet as possible and for four, three years we have had no problem. In fact, we haven't had a problem in any, any of our houses with neighbours. Well, ideally we want to get some corporate funding. We've just got our ATG um, tax exemption form, so we're <coughs> trying to get some corporate funding so that we can expand and do more ABC, animal birth control. That is our main thing. Everything else is extra. The rescues are extra, the puppy uh, rehoming is extra. ABC is the key to everything, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the reason being, once the dog population is manageable, you won't have so many rescues, you won't have puppies abandoned, you won't have a problem with rabies, and you won't have so many dog bites. But now, this is my life. Literally, I sleep four or five hours a day. I'm with dogs 18, 20 hours a day. When Mary's singing, I'm at home sometimes as many as 12 or 15 dogs watching the football with me or watching telly and they're just my life it's not a life that many people could live but ever since I was that tall I've always been around animals oh, we're, we're busy I think keeping busy uh, is enjoyable and um, it's not really uh, it's not really our field we, we both love dogs and we started this um, because we love dogs we're mu well, I'm a musician actually, <laughs> and so I, and I'm, that's my business here, I, I'm a musician, I sing at uh, hotels, I sing for weddings and that kind of thing, and this is just something we do because we want to make a difference where we are. I've never cried until I came to Kerala. For 20 years I never had a reason to cry. Here I probably cry, I cried last week when my dog died. My dog, Chitty, the old one, I cried bucketfuls. I had to bury her and it was heartbreaking. So I will always be passionate about all animals, not just I rescue geckos, if there's flying things in the house, I don't kill them, I try and catch them and put them out the window. Because it's life, we've got to make the most of it and try and be as happy as we can. But long term plans, as soon as we, we're confident that Street Dog Watch Association are doing their best and have support from the, the whole community, business community, politicians, public, then we will take a step back. In an ideal world, I'd like to go and spend two or three months back at home with my parents. My mother's blind and she's 83. My father's 85, he's in good health, touch wood. But I notice every time I go back, a deterioration in his, in his being. So I would like to be able to spend a bit more time with my parents because they were fabulous for me. But my life now is in Kerala. And when I do pass away, I either want to go into the sea 
or they can use my body for whatever they want to do. Dog food, <laughs> experiments, whatever. So yeah, it's our intention to stay here as long as we are permitted.